and welcome. My name is Kylie Bartlett, the host of the Web Celeb TV show, the world's first web TV show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs create buzz, build a brand, and get celebrity results in their business. is called Smash Your Brand and it's all about the key components that make a smashing brand. Now I'm wondering whether you know that when carrots were first designed they were actually every color other than orange. So they came in red, green, black, purple and white. And what happened was in the 16th century the Dutch decided to change the color of a carrot to orange in honor of Prince William the First, who was the Prince of Orange. So there you go. There is a brand that's probably missed its golden opportunity to absolutely smash it out there. So what I'd like to talk to you about is what makes a smashing brand. And a brand is made up of 12 components. And so what I'm going to be doing on this week's episode is breaking up a brand and smashing it into 12 pieces and going through go go through each of those pieces with you so that you have an idea of what it is that makes up a brand. Now another question I'd like to pose to you is if if I took away your logo from your business, would I recognize you? Would I be able to recognize what it is that you do? You see a lot of people do think that their logo is their brand. And what I'd like to better demonstrate to you today on this episode is that you are more than just a logo. So what are the 12 components of a smashing brand? Well, let's start with smashing your picture. So what kind of picture does your brand conjure up? And one of the best examples, I believe, of a brand that represents a picture is the brand Benetton, United Colors of Benetton. And what they decided to do was very much keep the colors and the brands internally, not outsource it to a branding or advertising or marketing expert, And if you take away the logo of Benetton, you can tell by their pictures and the models that they use. Some are dark skin, some are white skin, yellow skin. They use multicultural models and different colors to represent their brand. So you've got a really strong image and a picture of what Benetton stands for. Also, another brand that does this really well is Louis Vuitton. So if you look at the Louis Vuitton uh, pictures, You can take away the V and just by that beautiful brown and cream tones, you know that it's a Louis Vuitton bag. So that's number one. Piece number one is smash your picture. So piece number two is smash your color. So you'll be surprised. In actual fact, you probably already recognize that color is one of the highest components of a brand. And what we do is we associate colors with a particular brand. So the one that comes to mind for me is Tiffany & Co. You know that beautiful sort of light blue box and the white ribbon that they put around everything. And every piece of their marketing material is using that color. If you go to their website, their brochures on their uh, their packaging, when you get a Tiffany product or piece of jewelry, it's all the same color. So have a think about what color you're using to represent your brand. For me, I chose to go with red because it's a passionate color. It's bold. It's out there. I want to stand out in a crowd. I'm not a conservative brand, and therefore I've used a color that's very representative of where I'm wanting to be positioned with regards to my brand. The third one I'd like to talk about is smashing your shape. Now you might think, what has shape got to do with branding? Well, it's one of the most underutilized forms of branding. Have a think about uh, Coca-Cola. And if I gave you one of those traditional Coca-Cola bottles and I got you to close your eyes and feel the bottle, I bet you could tell it was a Coke bottle because they've been very clever in the way that they've designed their bottle. Also think of Galliano, the Galliano uh, brand of spirit. The bottle is very long and it, it turns into like a triangle at the bottom of it. And the other one that comes to mind for me with shape is the 
iMac. You know, like if you look at the iMac, the Apple computer, it's rounded at the edges. And even if I smashed an iMac laptop up, just by looking at those beautifully white curved pieces, you could tell that it was an iMac computer. Okay, so that's number three. So number four is smash your name. So what is it about your name or your business that is very representative of where you're wanting to stand in the marketplace? So I'll give you a great example. When the Porsche uh, 911 first came out in 1963, it was actually going to be called a 901. And actually 13 of them came off the assembly line, assembly line excuse me, known as a Porsche 901. And then they realized that Peugeot had a series of zeros in their names of their products. So they had the 504, for example. So only 13 901s were ever produced, and they changed it to a Porsche 911. So you can see there that they've used numbers to represent the name of their brand. So have a think about what is it that you can do within your names or within your logo, or within your brand, that you can start to own that word. Another one that comes to mind is Absolute Vodka. They dropped the E of Absolute. So now when you see that word Absolute, you associate it with the vodka drink. So very clever the way that these companies are owning words and owning a name as a part of their brand. Okay, now number six is own your icon or smash your icon. For me, I decided to go with a little television with me inside of it as my icon to represent the Web Celeb TV show. The one that stands out the most for me out there in the world of branding is the Mac, that little apple with that little bite out of the side of it. You can take away all the wording and when you see that apple, it very much conjures up that you're looking at and experiencing an Apple Mac product. So have a think about how you can smash up your icon. What is it that you could be representing in a picture or an animal. I mean, like another example is, you know, the Ever Ready battery, when they've got this um, little bunny running around. That, that's an icon. If you look at McDonald's, they have Ronald McDonald character as their icon. So I think you can get an idea of what I'm talking about with Smash Your Icon, a really great way of uh, extending your brand. Number seven is called Smash Your Sound. Now you might think, how can a sound be part of a logo or part of a brand? And it most certainly can. Let me give you an example. Have you ever flown Qantas where as you're boarding and disembarking, they put on that beautiful song, I still call Australia home. I mean, I get goosebumps just thinking about it when I travel overseas and I hear that song, I know I'm on my way home. So have a think about what sounds can you bring into your branding. For me, you'll notice that every one of my web celeb TV shows has a little jingle at the start of it because I want you to, to recognise that that is associated with my brand. So I've put a bit of music in to the opening of my show. So it's about smashing your sound. Now the eighth one is called smashing your navigation. Now have a think about when you go to a supermarket you know that in the veggie section that there's going to be the bakery or the, the breads to one side and then usually the deli is down the back. They are making their store layout easy for you to navigate through so that when you go shopping, you don't have to think much about where everything is, like the canned tomatoes or are near the canned soups and things like that. So have a think about your brand. Is it easy to navigate? When you go onto your website, is it easy to find your contact us details, your shopping cart, about us, your products and services? So have a think about smashing your navigation and making sure that your brand is easy to navigate through. Because if you find it difficult, then there's a big chance that your potential customers are also going to find it difficult. So the ninth way of smashing your brand is called smashing your behavior. And so the person that comes to mind for me, he was smashing behavior is Sir Richard Branson. I mean, the man is so wink, wink, nudge, nudge, cheeky, but you know that he's so charismatic and straightforward that he's really owned that cheeky space when it comes to Virgin and he gets away with being cheeky. I feel uh, that I know him. I feel that he's got goodwill, that he's straightforward and I can trust him all on the behavior that he's demonstrating when it comes to his brand.